Finally tonight, making the grade in science at a high-tech public high school. NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salmon reports. I don't know. I think there's a high school class where kids are preparing for the global future by learning to innovate and compete in high tech. We're hoping to create a sort of like training device for people um, who want to participate in the event. So maybe for something like tennis where they have a limited range of motion. Wes Vetter and partner Andrew Fergan seem about as competitive as you can get. Inventing new technology, a device to teach special needs kids to swing a tennis racket, for this year's Special Olympics. We're taking these three-point perspective drawings and we're drawing them out just to get an idea of that and then we're going to transfer them onto this program here called CAD, so we're just practicing that and right now. computer-assisted yeah. design. Right? Yeah. Computer For all the studies design. showing that American students are falling behind the rest of the world in science, it's not happening here. Hi, At High Tech High in San Diego, one of the most competitive charter schools in the country, everyone goes to college, yet anyone can attend. Admission is strictly by lottery. We have a series of robots uh, we're actually built for uh, this school is robotics. built on competition, uh, the, uh, making things like this semi-cyborg for a national robot contest. Uh, it's supposed to shoot Nerf basketballs into a goal uh, nine feet uh, off the ground. Shaped thing and would shoot them up into the air. Student science projects are everywhere: a shadow-activated LED display, an electronic ornament for the holidays. Connect the whole thing and have them blink on them on their own without me touching them. The can-make, can-do ethos extends near and far. There's an African bushmeat expedition down the hall from engineering class that's sequencing DNA to prepare for a trip to Tanzania, where contraband lion and chimp meat is reportedly sold. That's also how HIV may have actually transferred over from animals to humans, is because someone just ate a monkey. God's work, you might say, while in the process helping close the global gap in science. The U.S. now trails almost every country of comparable wealth in high school science tests. Canada, Japan, Australia, Germany. One reason High Tech High was created, to turn the scores around. San Diego businessman Erwin Jacobs says U.S. science deficiency was throttling the growth of his high-flying San Diego computer chip company, Qualcomm. Our problem was that when we go to hire, we were just not finding enough properly trained individuals trained so they could do new kinds of technology and that's the kind that we specialize in. Jacobs could import top talent from abroad but that didn't exactly address the problem of our decreasing competitiveness and what might happen to Qualcomm and America if the slide persisted. Well we over the years were very concerned about the fact that such a small percentage of students were really preparing themselves with math, science in the middle schools and the high schools, and then going on for graduate work in the sciences and in engineering. So business leaders in San Diego came up with an idea to pilot. A charter high school open to anyone. They approached educator Larry Rosenstock. They said, why don't we grow our own? Why don't we grow our own from internally, from in our community, from in our metropolitan area? Why don't we grow our own future leaders who will be playing these types of roles as, as scientists and engineers? Of course, we used to grow our own. America was long a fount of applied science. Yankee ingenuity at the start, creating labor-saving technology in a country with so much land, so little labor. And eventually, after the explosion of wealth, population, and public education, the advent of higher technology, from the automobile and airplane to the atom bomb and computer. America became the world's model for technology. America as number one. But these days, Jacob's ambition is more modest. That's what we all want. It's not a question, can we have a larger gross national product than China or some other, India, whatever. It's how are we doing, how in fact do we interact in the world with these other countries so that we provide to them enough goods that we can buy back their goods. Those are critical 
we have been falling behind, and part of the reason we're falling behind is because our educational system has been falling behind. This equals two of these uh, to the orange ones. So like One way to reverse the trend then, get kids psyched about science by teaching the fun parts, the discovery. So the beauty of getting kids to become interested in math and science and engineering is to have them behave like scientists, behave like mathematicians, behave like engineers, not prepare for bubble answer tests, which is not what those professionals do. And the way that you create that type of environment, like a place like MIT or Rensselaer Polytech or Caltech or Olin now, is kids make things and do things, challenging things, and then they're exemplary, which we look at, and they present them publicly. And then the whole school as an organism sees and says, that was a really good one. That one wasn't so good. Next cycle, mine is going to look like that one. Here we have the opportunity to be a part of what we do and not just, as they were mentioning, not just read off a textbook, actually get to be a part and do the hands-on part of the project and not just read about it like in other common high schools. We have this dilemma. How much mm -hmm. order do we, do we put over a society so this is a liberal arts school where you get stuff your, done your through fun and games, which it turns out inspires kids to try anything, including science. As in the annual competition of FIRST, FIRST, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, started by entrepreneur Dean Kamen, who invented the Segway scooter. Last year, says engineering teacher Dave Berggren, uh, this robot was its whole goal was to, um, if I can not render things, was to pick up uh, tubes, actually, uh, kind of like pool inner tubes, and place them on a big octagonal rack. Uh, and you basically got points by how many of your team got in a row, either horizontally or vertically. Students design and build everything from, uh, you know, transmissions to drive the robot to lifts and, um, and everything. So just on Tuesday, we shipped our robot for this year's competition. We just finished our six week build time. And, and uh, so we've been frantically working uh, for the last six so weeks. They frantically work on projects where the rubber meets the road or sometimes even the marketplace. Now at Olin College, a tiny new elite engineering school near Boston, Evan Morikawa became an entrepreneur at High Tech High. We interviewed him over the internet. Was I made a, a, a new way to input text, if you will, into PDAs and cell phones. His product, an electronic glove to improve on the all thumbs approach. Can you tap out for me as if you had the glove on? Hello, Paul, this is Evan. To type uh, an H, you just push your middle finger, and E is your pointer, and L is your thumb. Oh, I see. So combinations of the fingers give you different letters. That's right, and with five fingers, you can get 31 different letters, um, and I put a shift on the palm, or five. You talk to a kid who's done so something like this, and you can't help thinking, said, genius. Allow him to make things but look, his kids. teacher says, he started. Before, never having programmed anything before, could not read um, an electrical schematic at all, had never done any of that before, but ended up learning it. And a lot of what he learned, he actually learned from some of the other kids in the class um, that knew some of the bits and pieces of it, that knew how to solder, knew how to read a schematic, understood you know, what was happening with all the different components and stuff like that. And Evan did what I believe every student should do. Evan just basically became a sponge. He also became an entrepreneur, perhaps the key role Americans have played in staying atop the global economy for the past century, and certainly the key to Erwin Jacobs and Qualcomm's success, even now. I often tell employees that they should continue to think about Qualcomm as a startup, but a startup with a very good cash flow. And most people, in fact, are entrepreneurial when they have the right level of background and the right environment in which to work. And so, again, it gets back to the appropriate education, the appropriate motivation when they went through school, some excitement in their academic days, and of course now when they get into industrial situations. It's essential that we be able to find people with the appropriate training that is indeed getting harder and harder to do. That's why Qualcomm had to rely more and more on talent from abroad as Americans sagged in science, if not entrepreneurship. But they haven't sagged at high tech high. Only 38% of high school grads in California have met the state's college acceptance standards in math and science, compared to 100% at high tech high. 
Thus, by stressing actual accomplishment, fostering cooperation and competition, teaching teamwork, Larry Rosenstock's experiment may be one way to prepare the next generation scientifically for the global economy. But he insists it's not the only way. When I was principal of a 350-year-old high school, back east uh, public high school, there's, of a community that has 100,000 people, I learned a very strong lesson. There is not one solution for a community of 100,000 people. Ergo, there's not one solution for a state. Ergo, there's not one solution for a country. No, we need a quiver. That is what massive customization is about. That is what the future is about, and that's what globalization is about. We need a quiver of differentiated options for people. That's what we need. And this is one of them, and there are others. High Tech High itself, meanwhile, is expanding to more kids, other venues, earlier grades, and even other high schools, including one that now features a global focus, High Tech High International.